Hello everybody, my name is Rick McCutcheon. I'm a Dynamics 365 MVP. And today I'm on this, how to sell advanced mobility solutions with my friends at Resco. So today we're gonna have Trevor and Ben come, come in and they're going to help us take us through this model to help partners understand how to position and sell advanced mobility. And then at the end, we're going to talk a little bit about Resco. So Trevor, introduce yourself and let the people know who you are. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Trevor Metcalf. I'm the marketing manager with Resco. Um, ben and I are on the, the North America team, and we're really happy to join you today. Okay. Thank you, Ben. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Ben Mitchell. Uh, I handle partnerships and success here at Resco. I just joined in 2023, although uh, I have a little longer history with uh, dynamics and mobility and excited to uh, get the ball rolling here today. Okay, thank you. So we're going to talk about the uh, market opportunity for advanced mobility. Then we're going to get into and kind of uh, profile the customer and the size of the customer for an advanced mobility solution. And then number three, I think is going to be the most important piece of today is really how to have that conversation with a potential prospect or a customer about their advanced mobility needs. Then we're going to flip in and talk a little bit about Resco and their product and their success stories and learn how to become a partner. So let's get rolling. And I'm going to start things off with Ben and we'll talk about the opportunity. So, Ben, what's the opportunity for advanced mobility? Yeah, thanks, Rick. Um, you know, a lot of people think, well, isn't mobility just apps, you know? Take, take what I've got on a computer screen and make it go mobile. And yeah, in an ideal world, I'm sure that's what you would do. But there's a, there's a little more granularity to it than that. So that's where the advanced piece comes in. And we've got a few bullets here which really highlight or identify what we think of as, as advanced mobility. So right at the top of the list there, you'll see 100% offline capability. That allows a predictable, consistent, and fast experience. The second point there gives you an ability to access all the necessary data, uh, both when you're in the field, but also, you know, getting everything from, from the backend systems that, that you might need. So in an online app, you, you, can, you can only do that when you've got your signal. Um, but with advanced mobility, you might need that under a variety of different, uh, <clears throat> different conditions. So you need to be able to get all your work done, complete that job without the need for the internet. Third point there, the ability to collect all the relevant data in the field uh, with, with accuracy and efficiency, that again goes to, uh, goes to that offline capability. We spoke a little already about speed and reliability. And the second point there is, is the data synchronization piece. Something we see a lot of uh, with this advanced mobile scenario is that when data is being collected in an offline scenario, when it needs to be synced back with back office systems, there can be conflicts. So Resco in particular and, and other advanced mobility vendors look to have you know, a really robust, strong, granular level of synchronization so that you can be 100% sure that the right data is being synced back and that it's not overwriting things that may have been inserted at the same time in the back office when the field-based user was offline. Expected quality of life uh, functionality for mobile, you know, things like camera integrations, dictation, mobile print, navigation, these are native uh, device capabilities that you're just not gonna see with a kind of online or web-based mobile tool. So that's a, a, another area where advanced mobility really comes into its own. You know, things like uh, QR code scanning, you might wanna capture a signature in the field. You may wanna not only take photographs of things that you might find or video of things you might find that are noteworthy in the field, but you might wanna annotate those as well. So it's all these kind of extended capabilities that make up advanced mobility. And that last point there, uh, it's an experience built natively for mobile, the mobile user experience. It's, you know, not back office or web based. And that's, again, something that we see a lot of. It's like, why don't you just take the 
the office-based experience and transport it to the mobile device. Well, those, those two use cases are incredibly different. What somebody does sitting behind a desk in an office is, is radically different from what the experience of a technician uh, working on an, an oil rig or on a construction site might, might be faced with. And I think it's important that when we look at this, um, Ben, um, you know, when we talk about a mobile user and, you know, in our world of Microsoft cloud computing, we're all mobile users. Like I can pick up my laptop or my phone or whatever and off I go and I can work. But when we get into advanced uh, um, mobility, we're really talking about, you know, that person that's out there working on an ongoing basis where they're online and offline. And they don't know when they're going to be and when they're going to be back on. And you're going to see in some of the examples that Trevor is going to show where people may be offline for days as they, they're really off their grid working. They come back on the grid. They want to be able to synchronize their data or it could be part of a field force. Maybe I've got part of my field force serving forestry, mining and the oil industries. Well, those people will be out there going off the grid for an extended period of time. And that may just be a smaller group within a larger group of field workers. So I think we're, we're going to have a hybrid advanced mobility project, a straightforward advanced mobility, and then, you know, just a, you know, plain vanilla. I'm offline for a couple hours a day. And, you know, when I get back, I can synchronize my data. So I think there's be complexities and we're going to kind of talk through that today. Definitely. Yeah. So let's talk about the opportunity for advanced mobility. Yeah, the, the, the slide, uh, the graphic here really kind of tells, tells the story. Um, I'm sure many people may have kind of guessed at this, but, you know, we've got a little asterisk there, but around 70% of the current U.S. workforce are in frontline jobs. You know, that's a huge percentage, you know, 2.7 billion frontline workers, globe, that's a global number. This is, this is a huge market opportunity, not, not just for Resco, but for anybody in, in IT really, because of uh, you know, digital transformation, the move away from pen and paper and, and manual processes. The, <clears throat> the, the two stats at the bottom are, uh, are also telling, you know, we've got this 88% of businesses relying on their frontline workers globally. That's that's significant. Those people in the field are capturing what I think of as some of the most important and impactful data that an organization can can use to move forward. Yet only 55 percent of companies are giving frontline workers the collaboration and communication tools they need to do their job effectively. And I think that's that's the real crux of of the opportunity here. It's that. There's clearly large numbers of these people, but they're perhaps underserved right now by the technologies that are out there. And that's, you know, that's the big opportunity here is, is as you said, Rick, and I think you, you covered it really nicely, there's different flavors or levels of mobility, and it's not a one size fits all. Okay. Thanks, Ben. Let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the customer profiles that we that you know that we see, we talk about, that we interact with when we start to have that conversation about advanced uh, mobility. Yeah, and and m much like uh, many technologies, you know, we've really broken this into into three groups, uh, as you might expect with a technology solution. You know, we are quite frequently talking to and targeting folks in, in the IT department. So whether that's a head of IT, an IT manager, uh, solutions architect, they have uh, challenges around the technology that get used, gets used within, a, uh, within an, uh, an organization's environment. So, you know, solutions maintenance, just the sheer number of different solutions uh, that an organization has to, uh, has to cope with. So whether that's got custom coding, different modules, there's a compliance element and certainly a, a support element. And then we've got their objectives, you know, solution performance, uh, communications between the office and the field, and the proper processes and documentation to ensure those, you know, the job's getting done right and that the data is is getting into the right systems in the, in the best way possible. 
And, you know, when we talk about the challenges, you know, solution maintenance, custom coding, uh, industry compliance and support, I think another one is complaints, right? Because <laughs> it's the IT department that has to listen to these, you know, advanced mobility workers saying, listen, I need a better solution. You know, I can't be coming back to my hotel and having my device, you know, three hours to do a synchronization or, you know, people, I need to get this information to people real time. So uh, I think they're hearing it from their user base. So true. Okay. So let's look at the next group that we will be talking to usually in one of these sales processes. Yeah. And, and, you know, you just mentioned uh, that the people who complain to IT uh, are quite often the power users. These are, you know, often the people who are working in a particular uh, division who are advocating for strongly for the use of more advanced tools. They're the ones who are feeling the pain most keenly. They're the ones who want to see change. So they could be in field operations, uh, you know, other end user type environments. And, you know, they're looking to optimize their processes. You just mentioned, Rick, you know, a, a situation where a field-based user is, is trying to do their job, yet they have to come back to an office or a location where there is a, a connection in order to complete their work. So they put in a, an eight or 10 hour shift and then they've got another hour or two's work back in the office. It's these power users who are bringing this feedback into the organization and really highlighting where advanced mobility uh, is required. So they're the ones who are looking to identify the best tools for the job uh, and you know, really take on board feedback from within their team and win over uh, other people within the organization. And, and the, the next group we'll see are really the ones they have to win over. And you know, on the power users, so I spent some time, actually I was at your conference a few years ago in Rome and I spent, you know, the time there with some organizations that had, you know, large field forces and some people from Microsoft. And they were telling me that the average uh, call that one of these or a field call that one of these power users would make is north of $500, anywhere up to, uh, you know, a couple thousand dollars. It's costing some of these people to, to be sent to the field or to travel where they have to go. So I think, you know, having them productive, and you know, having them work most as efficiently as possible is very important. And you're gonna find when you're having a conversation with organizations, they really do understand the costs of you know, these field people. So when you're, you're gonna bring that up in a conversation, I'm sure you're gonna find it uh, accepted, especially with this group, the management team. Exactly. These these are the people who are holding the purse strings most of the time. You know, management or you know the business. These are your your operations managers, service managers, field ops field ops managers, and increasingly we're seeing this creeping up towards the the C suite. Even you know whether it's a, a CEO or a CFO, particularly as we get more and more into digital transformation. It covers the the entire organization, and advanced mobility is is a huge part of that. So we're seeing uh, the the people we we want to talk to, or that we're we're running in it, we're running up against uh, in these organizations. All of those different job titles are relevant. They're they're the ones who are seeing uh, workforce operations challenges. Training and education is a big one, and ties into what you were just mentioning, Rick, about independence uh, and efficiency in the field. If you're a, a more junior member of staff and you're, you're sent out there, do you need somebody to accompany you and to assist you with, with certain tasks until you get fully up to speed? That's something they're looking to address because one person at $500 or $1,000 for a visit is a lot, but if you've got two, then all of a sudden it gets uh, it gets really expensive. So they're really looking to drive those efficiencies. So their objectives are, yes, they want to create the, the best experience for their for their workforce. You know, that that goes to something else we'll we'll talk about a little later as well, which is uh, worker satisfaction and employee churn. You know, it's it's expensive to 
to train people. And if you lose them to because they're not getting the right tools to do the job, this is something that this, this management group are particularly concerned about. They want to, to make sure that they're retaining those people and, and really exceeding their customers' expectations as well. Somebody in the field doing a doing the best job that they can do is going to you know, get, get much closer to that, uh, that ability to exceed customer expectation. So let's you know, get into the advanced mobility conversation. And when we were putting this together um, a few weeks ago, I think this is what we really hit on as you know, we understand advanced mobility. Most of the partners have been selling mobility, but um, it's been my experience that you know, when I sit in these presentations, a lot of it's about the technology and not enough about the customer and their needs. So when I'm training salespeople or salespeople that work for me in the past, you know, we really start to say and start to talk about who is the customer? How do we understand their needs? What they're really trying to gain out of this project? And let's get them comfortable with us. And the best way to do that, I think, is to take them through a, a, you know, a series of questions to find out more about them and get the conversation kind of going on the other side of the table, right? We want to talk to you about your circumstance, what's going on. We want to find out the details about the prospects, existing conditions. How do you do things today in advanced mobility? And we'll show you some samples of this. Then we want to get into the challenges, right? So what are some of the challenges you're having or some of the goals that you want to create for your group? So let's better understand the prospects, current and future business challenges. And the last part is, and I call it ROI questions, but I don't know if they're ROI questions or just a continuation of an ROI conversation. Once we understand your circumstances and where you want to go, let's talk about what that's going to look like in the future and what's the benefit. So the idea of these questions and, and modeling these questions this way is really Find out how the customer is, exists today and what they do. Find out about the challenges. Then let's talk about the ROI and let's get them comfortable with their decision-making process, okay? And help them, you know, walk through and come up with the right solution for their business. So, Ben, why don't we jump in and talk a little bit about these circumstance questions? Sure. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. And, and you know, this is going to differ from technology to technology. Clearly, we have a, an advanced mobility focus here. You know, the the, the deskless worker or the uh, the frontline worker. So, um, you know, top top of the list there. Where where do your employees work? We need to we need to figure out from our our prospects and customers. You know, I don't mean whether they work in North America or in in the UK. I kind of mean are they are they. Uh, down at the bottom of a multi-story car park doing some kind of uh, concrete inspection or at the, at the top of a, um, you know, a wind turbine doing a, an installation or inspection check. So finding out where they work is, is really a, a key objective. Then we also want to know how many people uh, are working in that, in, in that type of role you know and what percentage of that is the total workforce because if you've only got a handful of people and they only make up two percent of the workforce then you know the the need for the organization is going to be less whereas you know we ran across an organization recently where you know 80 percent of their people are field-based so clearly advanced mobility is going to be a much bigger uh, a bigger target a bigger initiative for those types of groups and then we've got Another one, what, what functions do these field workers perform? You know, are they performing inspections? Are they doing hands-on type of technical repairs where they might need uh, manuals or things like that? Just a better understanding of the, the types of tasks that these people are doing. In some cases, do they need both hands to do those tasks or are they able to do it, you know, with just, with just one hand? Uh, do field workers require access to company data to do their job? So in some cases, the answer is no. But in many cases, that, that company data that they can draw on is a key component to not just doing their job, but to doing their job to the best of their ability. So, you know, we're, we're, this is all part of a, a sales discussion. Some of that, 
some of that company data can really be the difference between upsell and cross-sell as well. So it's key that we we get that when we ask these circumstance type questions, you know, whether they need to capture data to do their job, uh, inspection details, whether it's text-based or voice-based, whether it's photos or video. And then that sixth point, what tools and devices do they use to complete their work? I think most people jump to, you know, a cell phone, a mobile device, an iPhone, an Android phone when they think of this. But, you know, we've seen examples with tablets, with wearables like watches and, and even into, uh, you know, these things that you'll see attached to a worker's helmet that uh, offers augmented reality type uh, type approach to doing work. So there's a lot we can learn from, from these circumstance type questions. And I, I love circumstance questions because it, it stops us from jumping into a demo, right? And also, I don't want to talk about your problems right away. I want to ask you about your business and how it runs because I'm going to learn a lot about the next series of questions I have. And, you know, even if you know the answers, like, I, you know, I talk to somebody else and I know, you know, what functions your field people perform, I want to ask that question anyhow. Because I want to get the other, the customer, the prospect to start talking about their business. And what you're going to find is that they're going to direct you to the areas of their concern, right? Because that's what they're really trying to fix. That's what they're trying to move through. But we just want to sort of stay calm and ask a few circumstance questions to just get the conversation rolling. And for partners out there, you should have these models built for everything, not just for advanced mobility. If you're selling CRM, if you're selling ERP, if you're selling reporting, if you're selling Azure, you should have these questions prepared for when you go in, um, just to make sure, you know what, here's my top 10 questions I need when I'm selling a CRM system. You got them and you can review them and you can make sure that you have them covered. So we've gone through these circumstance questions. Now we're gonna get into these challenge questions which are going to start talking about some of the challenges of some of the circumstances that we've uncovered. Now, remember, the customer may take you into the challenges if you have good rapport right away, and, and that's an advantage. But really, we want to start to guide that conversation to understand where um, they're feeling their stress, right? Where, you know, what things they need to fix or to improve. So, Ben, take us through some of these challenge questions. Yeah, and, and I love I love uh, the way that you've kind of set this up, Rick. I love that kind of uh, that little sentence in blue at the top there. What are some of the challenges, issues, problems that you have concerning? Just makes it nice and easy to be able to say, okay, problems concerning the apps or tools that field workers use to do their job. That's a you know a very natural thing that uh, that might be a challenge for those people. In some cases, it's you know zero apps and tools it's pen and paper um, but in some cases it might just be deficient tools so we can really learn a lot there you know what challenges do you have about the proliferation of manual processes and paper-based workflows and and then you know because it's nice and open-ended the, the the prospect or customer can really just you know it's not a closed off yes no answer they can really talk and that's what we want to do is get them talking not have us talking um, you know, what about the lack of access to knowledge, information, expertise outside the office? Again, that's where do you really need to have a second warm body with you on these visits or even be calling back to head office to to ask questions if, if you can get a hold of them? Or would it be advantageous if you, you know, had access to that knowledge right there? Is that a challenge? Uh, capturing accurate and timely information. I'm sure we've all been in those situations where we've had a great call and we haven't necessarily, or a meeting, and we haven't recorded that information uh, either right after the meeting or even during the meeting in, in some cases. An hour later, I guarantee you've, you've forgotten at least some percentage of what you talked about. So being able to catch that information in a timely manner is, is a big challenge for, for many of these people. Field worker happiness and job satisfaction. This is a this is a big one for me because in conversations with with many different people, this is what we hear is that these people in the in the field 
are, are doing their jobs, but they they feel like they're doing a second job when they when they leave the their place of work, which is often outside in the field at a customer site or a customer location. So really something that that plays on the minds of of prospects as well. And and lastly, there we've got an adherence to health safety compliance issues in the field. And that's that's something that again that's that's well worth thinking about, particularly in industries where there are uh, a proliferation of field-based individuals. Health and safety is is huge. Compliance to standards is huge, and they're always looking for ways to to make their workers safer, happier, more compliant. And you know, Ben, when we start to ask these questions, and I'll give you a little bit of you know some of my secret sauce here. Um, sometimes you know when I, like I've sold CRM for years, and you know a lot of CRM systems. So you know where I get in the challenges, it was almost like it was all to do with Salesforce automation when I was doing it. It was really, you know, let's talk about your sales process and what are some of the challenges you're having with it, right? And it would just be an open book. Like I could sit there sometimes for 15 minutes with the VP of sales, taking notes and just nodding. Right. And remember when people are talking to you and I know we're typing away. And if we got a notebook, at old school, writing it down, just sit there and nod, right. And say, okay, bring it on. Give us more. We have to understand the challenges because we're going to sell against your challenges and make sure we cover everything in our solution that's going to make these challenges go away and, and help you get to where you want to go, which leads us to an ROI discussion. And, and again, <clears throat> this is, it just leads really nicely through these, these three different, these three different phases. So they're all going to tie together and, you know, it's all around what it means for an organization if, if things change for the better. So first one right out of the gate, how would efficiency change if, if field workers had access to all that information required to do their job? And this is, again, like you said, Rick, this is where you shut up and just let them let them talk, ideally. It's just let them give you the information that you need to build that, that business case, that ROI case. How much time would be saved? for back office staff if a field worker could complete the their work independently it's not it's not just that field worker's time it's anybody else in the organization who gets sucked into supporting them if they don't have the right tools to do their job how much more productive would junior field workers be if they had access to to detailed guides or how to's or you know top fixes that's something i think about ai a lot is you know surfacing uh, a, a customer site, surfacing the the top three fixes to a, a, a type of problem that might be faced in a particular industry. Um, th those types of things are, are big ROI winners. If, if field workers completed work faster, more accurately, how much would staff retention and job satisfaction increase? Again, these are, these are things we, we haven't necessarily put a dollar value or a number of hours or minutes, we're looking to derive that from the customer's mouth. It, it's, it's, all, it's so much more impactful if the prospect gives you that information. And these questions are designed to kind of tease that out of them if possible. And that, that last one there, uh, if they had access to customer information or prior work history, existing product details, et cetera, how might that impact uh, customer satisfaction. So I know I feel uh, a lot happier as a customer if somebody knows, oh yeah, we saw you had that problem three weeks ago, or you know, this is the third time you've had that problem, and they they kind of understand you as a customer a little more. That type of information goes a long way with helping the customer feel like they're being cared about. Okay, thanks, Ben. And, and with our question models, as you get better at asking questions. Um, you know, at first you may, you know, I'm doing my challenge question, my circumstance questions, ROI conversation, and you want to do one, two, three all the time. But what you're going to find is it's going to happen a little differently, right? Because you're going to start talking about a circumstance customer is going to lead into the challenge, right? And you're not going to wait to ask about the challenge and the conversation could go to ROI. 
So you could stream through, you know, that full uh, process with one question, right? Or you could go from group to group. But what we're trying to get you to do here is start to think about, okay, I've got all these customers. I know they have uh, workers, mobile workers, right? Let's have a conversation about what they're going to do to make that mobile worker more productive. And, you know, we work on enough of these projects together, Ben. These can be anywhere from a, a five-figure project to a seven-figure project, depending on what organizations you're working with. And there's still a lot of what we call legacy field service applications out there that companies have been on for, you know, 10, 15 years that, you know, are, you know, it's time to get off of them and, and move that field worker into the cloud. So work these question models, practice them, write them down and get some notes together, but you're going to get better and better at this all the time. Also, always be asking questions, right? You know, if you're in a trade show and, you know, I do this a lot when I'm training trade show reps, right? I don't want you to pull somebody in the booth and pull them over to your demo. I want you to have at least a one or two minute conversation with them to say, okay, this person has a real opportunity. This is how we're going to process them. Or this person's really looking at something for future or probably too small for us. Then you want to be able to, you know, here's the brochure. We'll talk to you later type thing. So you really want to understand how to use questions to make yourself a better seller and be more consultative because the more you listen, the more you're going to learn about what really are the problems of your uh, problems, challenges, and what ROI they're looking to gather um, of your customers and your prospects. So Ben, let's talk about, you know, we've uncovered, you know, what the customer's thinking about. We know what the ROI is. What are our next steps then? Yeah, really, those next steps are, are pretty basic. You know, we've got a, a how, a who, and a why. So, you know, when we when we look at the how, we're looking for those simple, whether it's a simple use case, something like a, a Canvas app, a model-driven uh, Power Platform app might work. But if not, you're probably looking to an ISV. And then, you know, who, which, which ISV is going to help? Who can offer advanced mobility and is purpose built for the Microsoft ecosystem? And that's, you know, that's Resco. And then we're going to get into a little more with Trevor. Why Resco? So we'll, we'll understand a little more about why we should be uh, that ISV that's going to, going to really enable some of those advanced mobility capabilities. And, you know, if we're dealing with customers that ne have never really used field service back to their CRM systems or ERP systems and use them just as a sort of a, a technical routing device, they may not know all the complexities, right? So at first they may think, you know, a, a lighter app can do this. But I think as we talk to them, as we present to them, as they start to understand the, the deeper requirements, they're going to find that they probably want, you know, some an enterprise app more like Resco. So Absolutely. that leads to our conversation with Trevor, who's going to tell us a little bit about Resco. Yeah, thanks, Rick. Um, you know, we're here to talk about, you know, not just advanced mobility, but why Resco. Um, we're not just uh, enthusiasts that do this in our, our free time. We are. Um, this is on our DNA, and we've been uh, exploring the world and providing solutions around advanced mobility for over 20 years now. Um, we actually have a, a long history with uh, not only mobility, but uh, the Microsoft community. Our technology used to actually power the uh, Microsoft field. Um, our technology used to actually power the Microsoft field service application for a long time. That's maybe where some of the Microsoft Dynamics World audience will know us from. And today we're still delivering on the promise of advanced mobility. And we're really looking to see how this can evolve. And we'd love to have you be a part of it. And we can talk a little bit more about what we offer. And just on that point you made about, um, you know, field service. So sure. traditionally you were the field service application for Dynamics, but you still have hundreds of enterprise dynamics customers uh, using Resco as their field service application. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of people have found that, you know, we deliver the experience that they have been looking for, that their field teams need, and um, they've, they've decided to, to stick with us. And I think they're benefiting from doing so. 
Uh, yeah, a little bit more just about us. I mean, like I said, we've been around for 20 plus years and we are global. I mean, you can find Resco being used up to the North Pole, South Pole, and basically everything in between. Um, and we have a large global partner network as well. So you can find Resco experts just about anywhere. Okay, so let's look at, the, as we call the NASCAR slide here with some of your logos, and you're going to see some world-class companies that use Resco. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think what this really shows is our diversity and, and capability, right, of, of the platform. I mean, everything here from, from field sales to um, this different contracting in, in aggregates and even home health um, we, you, we really can adapt to any industry. And I think that just goes to show that the, the advanced mobility story and all those like 80 plus percent of the world who are who are relying on the frontline workers, they're they're out there and we're we're delivering to them. OK, great. So, Trevor, let's talk a little bit about the Resco platform. Absolutely. Yeah. Like we said, we've been around for for 20 plus years and our technology has been you know, not just powering dynamics, but it's evolving, right? Um, we see a lot of opportunities and we'll get into them in a minute, but we see a lot of opportunities around, you know, Dataverse, Power Platform, and there's a lot of different ways that you can take advantage of Resco. So these are some of the ways through our accelerators, our modules, um, the different ways that you can customize the solution to suit your needs. And um, yeah, let's talk a little bit about how we use it in the field. So these are the three big, I would say, um, points for Resco and how you would use our application in the field. So as Ben mentioned, you know, data collection is extremely important. And with Resco, uh, both either through our, your partner or you know, yourself through your IT team, you can take advantage of our customization tools um, and the robust no-code, low-code options you have to you know, tailor, docu tailor your forms um, to be able to collect any and all data you need to in the field. And again, with being offline, you don't need to worry about downloading extra uh, questionnaires or the right tools for the job because you're gonna have them all on your phone or any device. And you're gonna be able to have them on any device. And uh, that's data collection. We always say like, you know, the, the results you get out are based on the data you put in. So if it's garbage going in, then it's probably gonna be close to garbage coming out. and um, you know, our data collection tools really allow you to collect the most relevant um, data and media in the field. So and what you do know, you do? And you know what's really important too is from a Microsoft partner is that, you know, Resco can support CRM for sure, CE. They've been doing it for years, mm -hmm. but because of Dataverse, they now can support Business Central and FNO. Right? Yes. So depending- Great point what customers out there who needs to collect data, create documents, share knowledge at an enterprise level, Resco has a solution uh, to fit them. Mm -hmm. Yep, so exactly. Let's talk a little bit about this architecture. Sure. So this is really sort of like the topographical map of how Resco works with the rest of your system, right? So on the bottom, we have whatever backend you're using. Um, we put Dynamics and Dataverse here. And like you said, Rick, there are definitely benefits to, to using them in different ways. Um, in the middle is the Resco platform. So you're looking at all of the different um, tools, modules, accelerators that we offer and, um, and all the ways that you can customize them and tie them to your solution. So like Ben said, you know, third party and, and mobile focused and you know, quality of life tools, you can use them, right? So route optimization, you're using um, whatever navigation you'd like, you know, use Siri or dictation for your mobile forms, anything that you can expect to do on a phone. We hope that um, it, it works in your mobile app. And then also, you know, in terms of uh, devices, like we said, you know, there's a lot of different industry standards now. We think that it's really just someone on a mobile phone. But like Ben said, it can be everything from a tablet specialized ruggedized device all the way to, you know, the fanciest no hands uh, AR technology. So, you know, one thing about Resco is, you know, you get over 20 years experience doing this, but you got over 500 partners. And mm -hmm. I've met a lot of these partners and they're specialists at this. So they can tackle the toughest projects out there. Or if you're new to Resco, the Resco team can help your 
partner organization to tackle the toughest problems out there. So, and yep. you know, really, this is the type of project we want as a Microsoft partner because this is where we're going to be able to create the most value for a customer. So yeah. Let's look at some of those value success stories. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, so the first one here is with our um, our Norwegian friends at Scale AQ. So Scale AQ specializes in um, I would consider a modern fish farming. So uh, they're out in the middle of the ocean uh, collecting information on the, the the quality and status, the health of their farms, their equipment, and for a long time they were doing this on paper. Um, how you complete a, uh, a questionnaire in the middle of the ocean with pen and paper, I have no idea, but they did it somehow. Um, and they really needed to, to go digital. They had a lot of equipment, they had a lot of paper, um, and they needed something built for mobility and built around their Microsoft solution. So what did they do? Um, they implemented Resco and uh, Microsoft Dynamics. We digitized all their paper forms. And not only did we see this with a lot of customers too, with people who uh, are trying Resco or seeing how their team can take advantage of it, right? And, and very quickly, a lot of people can, a lot of organizations can tell they need to expand. <laughs> they, they, they realize the ways, once they sort of the light bulb goes off, they know how they can use Resco and they see the vision and they take advantage of it. So Scale IQ is a great example of that. Uh, they, they launched initially only for internal equipment and processes. And soon um, for a lot of their customer use cases, they were using Resco. And, you know, the, again, the benefits are very clear, but really um, not only did they go digital, but they ditch paper. Um, they were able to take advantage of our data collection tools and really get better data to make better decisions. And also, you know, again, with a solution that is so adaptable and flexible, you can really scale quickly and quicker than really a lot that's out there. Okay, let's look at Stony Valley contracting. This is sure. a very interesting story with yeah. the huge ROI. Huge ROI. I mean, this the, we're we're friends with Stony Valley just because of you know the way we made the impact and and the relationship we've grown over time. I mean, these guys are up in Canada. They're in the um, they specialize in the the aggregates and contracting business, and uh, they're they're field techs again using paper forms. Um, this is another example of digitalization, but you know, there's so many use cases. This one is just so amazing because of what they're doing and where they are, right? So the the big issue that that Stony Valley had was they had a flood in their main office and they lost all of their paper records. Um, and these records are when techs would be out in the field, they'd be in the middle of um, you know, basically a dirt pit is the <laughs> you know, casual version. To say it, but um, yeah, they're in the middle of, of a dirt pit in Canada um, using a pen and paper to fill out their digital forms when the pens aren't freezing up on them. And um, even if they can successfully get all that paperwork back to the office, you know, you, they still lost their all of their data in a flood. So what we did is we, um, we along with our partner Spent Software in Canada, we worked together to create a solution that was, you know, digitize them completely for their processes. But again, they're 100% offline. They're in the field. They're collecting all of the data they need. They're able to build custom reports and use the knowledge tools to really um, you know, learn and become more efficient in the field. So you know, again, the benefits to them were very clear. But um, this is also another great example because of the way it connects with the back office system. So you know, Resco, we are about off advanced mobility. But all the way that we build our systems are very holistic. So not only does this benefit the frontline workers, but because of better data, custom reports, um, fast sync time, and you know so many other things that it really benefits the back office team as well. Okay, let's look at the United Nations Refugee Agency. And I know I've talked to this group and they're absolutely committed to uh, offline data retrieval. Yeah, this is the definition of offline. I mean, this they are not, I don't think you can become more offline than um, the amazing work that the UNHCR does. Um, if you're unfamiliar, the UNHCR, they're a part of uh, the UN and they deliver all of these different services to individuals and families who um, are in crisis through uh, like refugee situations, right? So um, they needed a way to be able to collect 
refugee information in the middle of when we say in the field, we mean that literally, um, <laughs> you know, like uh, no signal, no power. You are there to collect information and bring families together. And how do you do that? Um, uh, other challenges for them, however, too, is compliance. Um, data requirements, right? There's a lot of safety and security around the data they're collecting. So they need a solution that can provide that and, and deliver that even in an offline environment. So what we did, again, uh, we implemented a RESCO-based solution. They are gathering data. You can see in this photo, they have um, you know, UNHCR reps there with individuals with laptops or tablets, mobile phones, and they are gathering that, you know, life-saving information in the field without the need for internet and um, rest assured that they're going to get their data synced and backed up appropriately. And so, they may be offline for four or five, six a week, right? Days yeah. before they get back to this, where they can synchronize back to their server. So yeah, uh, very exactly. important. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about partners who want to get involved. Not only, you know, how to sell advanced mobility, how do I become, you know, part of the Resco team? Sure. Well, we have, you know, you can tell here, we have a very robust partner program. And um, we work really closely with our partner network to ensure their success. Um, like you said, Rick, these are specialized, not only specialized partners, but they're partners who really want to deliver a, a quality experience for their customers. And oftentimes they are solving these, these challenges that are, are really life-changing to the job. I mean, um, you know, so we're, we've been fortunate to cultivate a network of partners who uh, believe in that vision and um, who want to deliver those mobile first offline experiences. Um, and it's really as simple as uh, getting in touch with us and um, begin that conversation. I think that's all it is. Like Ben said, a lot of this, and like you've said, a lot of it is having a good quality conversation around your business challenges, around what you're looking to accomplish, and more often than not, Resco can deliver. Okay, great. So um, how do we get a hold of Trevor and Ben? Sure, right there. <laughs> um, yeah, please feel free to get in touch with us via email, LinkedIn, um, we are pretty active in both of those places and we love getting in touch and just, you know, again, having a conversation. So um, please don't be afraid to reach out if anything here today interests you or you'd like to learn more. So gentlemen, I've got to thank you for your time today. This was an outstanding conversation on advanced mobility. And I'm sure we'll be back to you in the future to find out what's going on at Resco and what's going on in the world of advanced mobility. Thank you very much and have a great day. You too, Rick. Thanks so much. Sounds good. Thanks, Rick.